we up and running. Good morning. I'm not sure if you can see it if it's washed out. Top left hand corner, the Don Quixote building up there. There's sky showing and the clouds are moving right to left. And this is really unusual. The clouds are coming from, the, the wind is blowing from the north. This never, never happens here. This, the wind always blows from the south. When we look the other direction towards the sky tree, the clouds come from my right going to the left. And this is cloud movement the other way around. It's beautiful, beautiful blue sky today. The forecast is for rain later. It's going to be gradually, gradually cloudy in. If you've been watching this, those clouds almost always, when you see them, are moving the other direction. When we see this sort of thing, it's usually an indication of, uh, of a typhoon, because when there's a typhoon out there or coming close, the winds go round and round, so you get lots of wind that's coming from different directions, a half an hour later it's coming from another direction, stuff like this. But typhoon, there's just nothing out there, and that's bizarre for this year. I think they told us that this year was going to be a uh, iconic year for, for typhoons and stuff and we haven't seen anything yet not complaining not complaining but it's bizarre you look at the typhoon map and the Pacific is just empty and we expected expected chaos they told us it was going to be I shouldn't talk about it because we're still six weeks or so left in the season but uh, The one near Taipei, whatever. <laughs> Northeaster coming in. So how about the Atlantic side? Has there been lots of typhoons this year, or or fewer than normal? I haven't been. I, know, I haven't been following anything. Anyway, good morning, everybody. As you can see, I didn't get this block finished yet. One side, the back side, is now. Oh, it's not totally finished. Look at this. What should we do? Finish clearing this cut some more let's just cut some more let's get cutting it was supposed to be finished on the weekend they're going to be it's September the 12th and this is the block set for the October prints <laughs> Didn't a typhoon pass through southern, southern Japan this week? So I don't know. I guess so. I know, whatever. There are typhoons out there, but my point is there's usually one after the other, after the other, after the other. And this year we haven't been hearing news about this at all. So I guess they're decaying. They're, they're turning out to be just rainstorms. Okay, let's get this organized, get a bit of work done, then let's see. to be in this area so let's see if we can zoom in <laughs> if the typhoons stay away from Narita for a couple of weeks vivid time when are you coming what's your schedule I know you've been talking about it for a long time what's your actual schedule when you're coming in the door Guest stream, when are you coming in the door? Or is it top secret still? I don't know, no idea. Anyway, let us know. We're gonna have a guest one of the streams in the next month or so. So, need to figure it out, let me know. Okay, whatever, we're all waiting. <laughs> so, <laughs> live from Asakusa. Okay, we have, as you can see, it's going to be a carving stream today. We have a show and tell. A show and tell, it'll be a bit different. We've got uh, three things. Show and tell today will be three parts. Well, we'll talk about it when we get there. It's, it's not sock material today. Just It's a normal, quiet show and tell. Nothing dramatic. Stuff you ha haven't seen before, I, I think. Quite sure you haven't seen it before. And three quite different things. There'll be three parts to it, maybe five minutes each, three things. I don't know. We'll see. I got the 
this block is taking so long to get finished you know it's me it's not it's not anything to do with the block it's a normal easy block it could have been done in a couple of days One of the reasons over the past few weeks that this has been delayed and mixed up has been our bookkeeping. It's been financial year end for us. And actually, late Friday night, know, late, it was late Friday night. He must have been working at midnight too. Email comes in from our, our tax accountant, the outside guy that we use. We do our own bookkeeping. We do our own accounting. But for taxes, we, we you know talk to a pro, obviously. There's lots and lots of ins and outs that we don't understand. And we've talked about this before. He, our bookkeeping system doesn't match what he's expecting. He doesn't deal with other clients who have overseas business, stuff like this. So it's always a, a struggle getting our books to get the proper data out that he needs. There's always a lot of back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. Anyway, this one's finally over. We've, He's given me, on a Friday night, he gave me the outline of our tax bill. And it looks like it's coming in as expected. It's not exactly sure how much. It'll be about three and a half million is our tax bill that will be due, like in a couple of days, actually, into the end of the month, I guess. Our bill is uh, somewhere around three and a half million. That's, of course, not dollars. That's... Uh, that's the end. The day Dave will have a tax bill of three and a half million dollars is, uh, I don't, I don't think we're ever going to get that far. But, uh, but it's a hit. It hurts, you know. I mean, whatever. I know we have to pay taxes, to society, and everything else, and pay our share. Blah blah. I know. I get it. It's okay. There's no complaint. Well, I can complain and gripe about it. And that's not my personal, my personal income taxes will of course be, be on top of that, my own personal stuff. This is no longer my own. Uh, before we became a company, the company tax bill and my personal tax bill were one and the same. Now they're different. We pay corporate taxes, of course, and Dave pays personal income taxes on the salary that he draws here. So, so I will have my own income tax due at the end of the year. This is the corporate tax. Three and a half million. Goodbye, 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 goodbye. Do you have to be fluent in Japanese to run a business where you are? Well, you know, what can I say? I know, what can I say? I've been running my business here since long before I could speak Japanese. As long as you've got, you know, like I said, when it comes to time to doing your tax return and stuff, it has to be done in Japanese. So you either need Japanese help or, or hiring it. But you need to be fluent in Japanese to run your business. No, I, I, there's no general answer, of course not. You don't have to be Japanese. Foreigners can run businesses here. I do. I, I own property. I hire people. I own and operate a business. I'm a foreigner. There's, a, there's no uh, citizenship restrictions on those activities. They have recently started to do some little bits of that. If you, uh, I guess what was happening. Some Chinese companies were buying land next door to one of the air bases or something. And I think the government got a bit nervous about this. Chinese registered companies buying a six-story building right next to one of the air bases and they're like installing microphones and cameras and you name it, whatever. So the government was kind of getting nervous about this. And I think they might have made uh, zones. But a building within one block of the Prime Minister's residence or stuff like this, I think you may have trouble trying to buy this if you're a foreigner. I don't know how far they actually went with it. I don't know. But no, as a foreigner, there's no barriers to me to doing these things, running a business, buying property, etc., etc. I pay the same taxes exactly as anybody else would, whether they were Japanese or not.
paper is out today. Didn't I see your message? I'm sorry. Paper is out. Three people. Ishikawa-san is working on uh, the weaver, the little print of the weaver. Sugi-san is working on the final batch of prints for the September prints. They're due to go out next week. She's working on the final batch. And Ahimi-san is doing the bonodori. And today, I think we are getting her proof. She and I have been working on this all last week. She's been proofing and bringing to me. I've been carving, proofing, bringing to me. I've been cutting blocks. And I think today we are getting a final proof. And I really hope so, because I want to put this into the next mailing that's going out, perhaps late tonight, perhaps tomorrow. I think these are indeed shiitake. I don't know the brand name of the mushroom. There's, there's two mushrooms here. There's a mushroom here and some more mushrooms in the soup. I don't know what they are. Outside cam is too loud. It's because there's a truck there. I can turn it down. Let me know. Someone says, buying a house as a foreigner in Japan is ludicrously difficult. I, that is not my experience. There's no laws about that. I know getting a mortgage, you got to convince your bank that you're going to, you know, stay here and stuff like this. What are my feelings on the demise of Her Majesty? <laughs> I guess so John wasn't here. We did talk about this stuff. So, so John, you you missed him. It's your your. <laughs> No deep thoughts on it. I don't know, we talked about it. The younger Dave, the Dave who was 18 or 20 years old, was an ardent anti-royalist. The current Dave that sits here today is no longer has deep, strong feelings about this. But when I was uh, younger and more opinionated without being carefully thought out about things, I would have uh, been very much an anti-royalist, down with it, off with their heads and that kind of stuff, but uh, totally no longer the case at all. I'm going to follow this a little bit now with quite, quite interest because uh, we touched on it a bit the other day. I feel uh, kind of contemporaneous with, with Charles. And I, he and I are just a few years apart. And I think our character is something quite similar based on what I see of him. And it's very curious how he's going to do this. Uh, I'm not interested in the monarchy per se, but it's really going to be interesting to watch as a as a as a theater, if nothing else. You know. I think he's a complex, interesting guy. Uh, he's obviously clearly very thoughtful, uh, very uh, conscientious, very serious, wants to do his job properly. I think he and I overlap very much in part of our character in those ways. He's been totally hamstrung, not totally hamstrung, he is now going to be totally hamstrung, so I don't know how it's going to go. One thing I did notice, so did you see some of that footage of the different ceremonies and stuff that are being, uh, turn your engine off, guy. Thank you. Some of the ceremonies of that, footage of the ceremonies that were going on, there's one place where they're doing this proclamation thing and all the old prime ministers, ex-prime ministers are hanging around and there's the proclamation reading this, reading this, put this on the table and the guy has to sign this. But did you see this thing that happened? He goes to the table to sign this and like the pens or something are in the way. This inkwell or pen stand or something is in the way. The guys have done the job and tried to set it up. I mean, nobody's done this ceremony for 70 years, so nobody really knows what to do. They've set this thing up. And he got to the table and I guess something was in his way. And he couldn't do the proper signing because the inkwell or something was in his way. 
But did you see what the guy did? This is really, I was really, really sad to see this. I can't imitate it all that well, but he saw this, he couldn't. He leans over to his right, the people there, and he makes some gesture with his bad face, get this shit out of here. And some guy came running in and moved the pens, and then Charles sat down and did this. And I thought, what, what, like, what country are you the king of, you know? And then like, oh yeah. <laughs> so, so maybe that's it. The guy is uh, a real, not a nice person at all, but could be inside, you know? Because that gesture, that one quick second, and he's on live TV, and he knows the cameras are there because he invited them in. And he does this thing, he looks at the guy, what are you doing? He gestures with his hand to get this crap out of here. And the thing about this is, it, the instantly I saw that it reminded me, there's this rule, I don't know if my mother ever told me this rule, she didn't tell me this rule, she didn't know about it, but there's this rule that we tell young people. When you're thinking about choosing your partner stuff, you're on your first date with this guy, or, or with this gal, you're on your first date, you're in the restaurant, and things start to go wrong in the restaurant. Wrong food is there, the waiter spills wine on your dress or something, whatever. How does your partner behave? Get upset, get angry, blah, 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 or they laugh it off and brush it off and they get through it smoothly. There's your hint to what this partner is gonna be like to you in the future. So the, the, the first date going wrong in a restaurant is a real clue to somebody's character. We all like know this, you know. And there we are, we saw that guy, things started to go wrong and instantly, a fierce face, unfriendly, hostile. So people are excusing this, of course, because uh, I get it, I get it. It's an insane, abnormal life. So yes, we have to cut these people some slack. The guy has been, you know, coddled and everything all his life. So it's not maybe quite as simple as I'm making it out to be. I don't know, but just that little episode just ran up a little red flag for me thinking, oh, 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 I wonder what that guy's really like when nobody's watching, you know. I don't know, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know. Anyway, last thing they need is the peanut gallery here telling them how to do their business. So. We had this morning tons of truck action just before the stream started. There is some kind of movie or TV production going on down the street. I don't think this is related to it. This is just a delivery of something or other but there were trucks and TV people and cameras, whatever, in the other direction earlier this morning. This is just something being delivered. To who, to who, to whom, no idea. Get some work done, get some work done. Don't sit watching TV here. Watching my own stream, Amanda. Watching my own stream while it's on. Come on, give me a break. It's a delivery of some equipment, you know, the renovations and reconstructions and building and stuff never, ever, ever stops on this street. It's just, now we too, we're part of it, of course, we've done building and bashing and changing, but it just literally never stops. There's never a time when one or another of these businesses is not changing or leaving or coming or renovating.
Yeah, the red marks, of course, are showing me what to keep. You know, everything else disappears. When we're finished this block, you can see here's a finished similar block. The areas that are in red have been kept to stay. The areas around them are gone. And you can imagine later when we're run rubbing pigment here, the top areas catch the pigment, the paper goes on, and it transfers the pattern to the piece of paper. That's, it's in a nutshell, that's what we're doing here. And these are color blocks for a print set that's currently under construction. There will be uh, one key block, a key block with lines like this, and there will be five color blocks like this with color shapes. So one plus one, two, three, four, five color blocks. It takes time to get it done, but once you're up and running, once the blocks are finished, it's a very, very, very efficient, cool way to make a whole bunch of pictures really quickly. Very low tech, very high touch. Didn't, uh, didn't get my pool today and I won't be all week. The pool is closed for maintenance this week. The entire building is closed today and tomorrow. They're doing something with the air conditioning. And then for Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, the pool is undergoing maintenance, painting and water changing and stuff like that. Then the Monday after that's a holiday, so I get back to the pool now for until <coughs> Tuesday, not tomorrow, a week away, is, is uh, well, I won't have a chance to get to the pool. I'm going to die. What am I going to do without swimming for one week? Also, we're missing, it seems, the air conditioning sound from rocks. You know, the big that we hear in the streams? That's what's going on in maintenance, I think. The whole building. Is it there? I can't hear it. I can't tell which is the background noise, which is that one or not. Dave's going to gain a kilogram. Dave is not gaining anything. Here, I got the weight here. Dave is holding fine. The last couple of days I gained, I'm holding steady at 63. People were onto this. You lost all that weight really quickly, but it's going to come back. It hasn't come back. Not yet, anyway. What's this blocks? How long do the blocks last? Time and prints. Time and prints. There's no single number to say. I know there, there isn't really any single pat answer I can give. I know. Actually, let's talk about that again at show and tell, because one of the objects in today's show and tell is an old block. So let's talk about that at that time. Remind me.
they've had that graph at the ready. The graph is updated every couple of mornings. <laughs> it's <all right. laughs> motivation. All about the motivation, right? We talked about this before. <laughs> Watching the graph is more fun than eating the donut. More deliveries? Is there really, really major construction happening down there then? Don't know. Where are they delivering to? No idea. Something major is going on. Are people allowed to film the street? Not specifically, no. What we're doing here is under the radar. I know if I went to the local police office and said, hey, what do you think, guys? If I put a camera up and do some live streaming, they will say to me, it's better if you didn't do that. Uh, I said earlier today there was a movie crew down there. They will, of course, have been to City Hall. They've got permits. They've got all the things they need. What I'm doing, I'm not permitted, of course. The idea is just, you know, don't make a big deal, just do it quietly and you'll be quietly okay. We've been showing the street now for, gee, a long time. And there's never been any blowback or anything. So yeah, it's one of those things that don't ask and you know, don't tell. And technically, it may not be permitted. And if we tried to ask, nobody would know who was able to give permission anyway. Yeah, the noise you hear in the background is the vacuum cleaner over at the hotel across the street. I think that was done. Mushroom caps. 
What's left? The chestnuts. This is the dark brown spiky block for the chestnuts. That's the last cutting on this print. The last knife work. Someone's asking, what business is building? I know nothing about this. This is all new to me. After the stream's over, I will stroll down the street to get a cup of coffee and casually have a look and see what's going on. I don't know. I have no idea. And he says, when I walked up to the shop last spring, I barely even saw the camera there. What, were you here on a day? Oh yeah, that's right, you did, yeah, 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 yeah. I think most people don't see it. Absolutely, most people don't see it. So the carving that looks like an amoeba, as I said, it's a, it's a chestnut, chestnut. I'm curious about where that thing is going. I want to walk down there now and see what's going on. <laughs> It's, you've got the, the cat sits in the window watching the street go by all day, you know, and the cat watches stuff. There must be stuff that happens just outside where the cat can see it, you know. <laughs> and I feel like the cat in the window that watches these things go back. At least they turned their trucks off. Trying to be a good boy here, still stiff, very stiff, stiff, and, and I had the feeling that it could go again any moment now. I have that feeling if I'm not careful. Not out of the woods. So, still stiff, yes, still stiff. The chestnuts are made up of a bunch of different colors, and this is the darkest brown color that will be the outside of the chestnuts. So we have to take away the highlights. There's places where they look glossy and shiny, and those are highlights. Then the body will be brown, and they have brown spikes, which I didn't try to draw. We'll just we'll just carve them freehand. Chestnut spikes. So time, we're okay. It's a Monday morning, so we will see Ayano-san. She should be here uh, at nine o'clock or so, somewhere around there. And I can guess what's gonna happen, actually. She's gonna come in, and on Friday, before she left, she gave me a list. She gave me a list, a, a Dave to-do list, and it was sort of a, exclamation part to-do list and she's stepping up her game here she and uh and watanabe-san are stepping up their game they they're learning about me and how to handle me and like when she came here a few months ago it's like she was like waiting for instructions and stuff like this but she's not been here a half a year she knows how things work here completely No idea what's in the chat there, whatever. She's learned on all how. So on Friday, her mood was different. Hi, see you later, good. Go up at the weekend. She says, before I go, 
and she gave me this list of three, three or four things. And I know they were stuff that really sort of did have to be done. I knew this. And I might have actually, you know, maybe got around to, to one or, or two of those things. But she was quite serious that uh, when she got back on Monday morning, these things, uh, you know, were not going to be here because they were going to be finished. And, uh, she was happy and friendly, but there was also some like, there was a new edge in her voice there. And I get it, I get it, I get it. And I'm not, uh, not you know, I've, I've asked them, you know, come on, you guys help me get these things organized. And help me get these organized simply means help me control my time and what I'm doing and stuff like this. So they are actually now stepping forward. She and Watanabe-san have now begun to step forward a bit more strongly, realizing that although Dave's the boss, they actually can start to, uh, I'm not sure what expression to use, so they can push him around, or not push him around, but they can help him focus on the jobs that need to be done. Anyway, long story short, I killed her list. I killed her list, which is why this isn't done, actually. I, I killed her list. So she's going to come in this morning. And she may start right out with it. Hey, the list I gave you on Friday. Now, she probably won't do that, but she will get round to asking me <laughs> quite soon. <laughs> so she'll be here with in another 20 minutes or so, and uh, I don't know. And now there's, there's a new dynamic in play. Like I did actually do the things that needed to get done that she asked me to do. So the thing now is she's learned what she needed to say to get things done. So next weekend, is it going to be more of the same? Have I now got a new monster on my back? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Be careful what you wish for. You may get it. Which just went down, did it? No idea. Nothing at this end's going on. No red lights flashing here at all. My Wi-Fi is. I'm not on Wi-Fi. I'm wired directly to the that Ethernet bunch of pipes. Internet bunch of pipes. You should please her. It's done when she walks in. Tell her it's done. No, no, because that then means you know. That's asking for more. <laughs> I've, got, I've got to make it look like I did manage to get through all those things you, you got me to do, but it was such a struggle, and oh my God, it destroyed my weekend, and I wasn't able to do this work, and please be careful next weekend, okay? I have to make sure this gets communicated. If I just say, yep, did that, no problem, then that's it. Next week, there's going to be lots more, you know? I, it's, it's a, there's, a, there's a dynamic in play here, <laughs> so... There's a dynamic here.
if it is the Korean place that's renovating, you know, my God, how many times, you know, they've actually been, seem to be doing well. They, they go up and down, up and down. They changed their menu a while back and they encouraged people to go upstairs and sit in the restaurant there. And that's not happening. Their, their flood of business seems to be still the same thing. The, the stretchy hot dogs they make and people sit outside and eat it. They opened this big izakaya menu a while back, but I don't see anybody eating any of that stuff outside, and I don't see people going in and going upstairs, so I don't know. That doesn't seem to be uh, have worked. So they could still be experimenting with their business, you know? If that's who is doing these renovations, I don't know. They're certainly busy. You know, they have been busy, busy, busy. The delivery bicycles come every few minutes, all during the day, on the weekends, Saturday and Sunday. The delivery drivers just line up there sometimes. And we get that quite frequently. Whenever I'm standing outside just catching a, you know, a rest or something and standing outside watching the world go by, I will see this happen all the time. Delivery bicycle comes close by, the guy gets off his bike right in front of my place here because it's the same address. All three or four buildings here have the same address. So he gets off his bike. He's the delivery guy. Now I know exactly what he's looking for already, but I sit and watch the drama play out. He looks at me. He looks up at my sign. It doesn't kind of match the hot dog thing that he's looking for. And it's just down the street a little bit. And some of them get it right away and some of them don't get it. They will move left, go around the block the other way, and I'm thinking, he, 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 you should have gone right, guy, you know. And every now and then some of them will ask me, ano, and I, at that point I say, ano, hot dog this ne, hai, so this ne. I just point, it's right there, guy, take a look. And, oh, ah, so this ne. It's quite a business, you know. If I had sat and counted, it's Dozens and dozens and dozens during the day. The bicycle delivery guy. I don't see it happening for any of the other restaurants. The one next door has this service they advertise. They've got this menu, takeout, delivery, Uber, etc., etc., etc. I don't think I've ever seen a pickup driver come there. Eight forty nine. We're still okay. Good. The knife blade here today is not really suited for this particular little part of these blocks, carving these highlights out with a little curve at the bottom. Remember the other day after the knife had been breaking so much, I sharpened it to a more obtuse angle. So it's not great for going around that little corner like I just did right now. Got to be careful. But it's going to be perfect for all these spikes.
That's the owner of the orange bar, the bar that's underneath the theater there. So it could be that it's his place that's getting some renovations. They did a few weeks ago something like this happened. Some uh, trucks came, took some old gear out and put some new gear in, stove, fridge, whatever, something like that. So it could be that's what's happening here. This could be the, the late night bar that's underneath the theater. And they've been waiting for him to show up. Maybe they've just unloaded all the gear. It's sitting there and he, they got confused or something and they're here too early. And he's just showed up now with his key. That's his bicycle. So he's going to open up. So it looks like now this is renovation equipment for the orange bar underneath the theater. I think. We'll see. I'll stroll down later on and we'll have a look at it. But I think that's what's going on here. Rangakshas here. Good morning. We're going to need some kanji reading later on. <laughs> so <coughs> we're going to need some kanji reading. But let me uh, let me pop you a head start right now. <laughs> so <laughs> actually, this I can read this part of it. <laughs> Just a sec. <laughs> Rangaksha shows up. We'll put him to work right away. We have three here. The first two I understand. The first two I get, the third one I don't. It's related, obviously. The first one is a momen, cotton. The second one is asa, flax. And I don't know the third one. It's maybe hemp or something, but I don't know. I don't know the Japanese pronunciation. So here we are, people showing up and getting, getting them to do my homework for me. And you may ask, what's the connection with woodblock printmaking? Why am I asking these questions? And what are we going to see in show and tell? All will be explained. We're going back to Taisho 6. Can you motor off, guy? Come on. Come on, Ian. Oh, Ayana san. Hello, 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 hello. He's not going to turn his motor off. There's two different drivers for this company, the Oshibori company. One guy turns the motor off, and one guy doesn't. This guy doesn't, so we have to turn down the audio outside here. How you doing? How was your weekend? See my family. Uh, See your family? Yes, this my parents, like, my sister. What part of the country? What part? Japan, no, is I, it? No, but I mean, 
they, 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 they live inside the microphone. I don't know. I'm just, was, so this is not an awful question. I mean, <laughs> some people, you know, it's in, in Okinawa or something. I don't right, know. Right, right. Say, we did here, barbecue together. Thing. We did barbecue together. And then my sister, uh, she's pregnant now. Uh, she's due next month. So I older, want to younger sister, older sister? Uh, 20, how old am I? Why do you need? 28. So my sister is 20. Younger sister? 20, yeah, five. Oh. So she's she's like married and family and stuff. She's married and has so family. this takes the pressure off you from your mother and stuff, does it? Like, is that is that situation? No. No, my parents are not really serious okay. about you know like getting married. Because yeah. sometimes we really hear this. The grandma's like, "When are you going to do this thing? When yeah. are you going to do this thing?" That really is a thing. They kind of make fun of me, you know, still not married. My sister got married before me, and then you know having a baby, bought the house already. Okay. And but I this is it's, there's no real stress about this. No, 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 no. Yeah. yeah. But that's because she's done this, so the stress is off. Stress is off. If she hadn't done this, then then, then I don't know when it's gonna be. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, <laughs> so it was so much something. fun. Yeah, I had a barbecue. Yeah. yeah, nice time with them. Didn't get caught in the rain, okay? No, no, no. 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 Good, 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 good. My arm hurts. My shoulder actually. My shoulder, my left shoulder hurt the other day, and now it's right. Getting old, this kind of. Shoulder pain. What are you doing? Spending too much time at the computer screen? No, maybe, maybe. I just maybe. woke up with bad pain in my shoulder. But too, too much time at the computer screen. I don't think so. Yeah, I really don't think so. Just one, one arm, one shoulder? Well, I don't know. I mean, anyway, you know the rule, right? Do it for a while, change out and do something else, and go back, you know, pack right. some prints or do something. Do you get shoulder pain? The, the only, if you spend too much time doing the same thing after, all over without changing, you're going to get in trouble, you know. So far, I just thought I was getting old, you know, and I'm getting like a shoulder pain like every Listen to <laughs> this girl, listen to this girl, getting old, yeah right, and her, her age starts with a two. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me about it, ma'am. <laughs> They're all laughing at you now, old at 28, over the hill, no chance, it's all done. <laughs> My life is over. <laughs> she hasn't said anything about it. <laughs> okay, and we go upstairs and then billing this guy. Pardon me? Billing? So prescription billing. Yeah, as you said, right? You, you, so yesterday was the day, so I didn't I touch that part at all. Yeah, I no problem. Yeah, I will do yeah. it now. Good. You over her. Ah, she'll do it like that. She didn't ask me anything about that stuff. I have mixed feelings, you know. I actually was a good boy. I did it all. So I'm waiting for her to ask me so I can say, yeah, I did all my homework. But I don't really want to make it look that easy. So anyway, there it is. Oh, she was watching the stream. <laughs> it's quite possible. <laughs> it's quite possible on the train she was watching. How long ago was it? She walks here about. 10 minutes from the station. So if it was in the last 10 minutes, we're safe. <laughs> she was watching the stream. You know, I never thought about that. Okay, you've been doing some Japanese translation, have we? Have we? Have we? Momen, I know. Yes, Asa, I know. The other one is Oma, Jute. The, the reason for that conversation about the, the materials that are used is this. I know here, it's a, an auction. I, something came up on auction last week. It's going to be show and tell, but whatever. This auction came up last week, and it's related to what we're talking about here. Let's do a bit more work here. It's still early. The bicycle there belongs to the guy who is the owner of the orange bar, which is two, two, three doors down here. And he uh, would not be expecting to be here. The orange bar normally, they open at uh, seven in the evening on the nights that they are open. It's kind of a guerrilla organization. <coughs> they open at seven and they close at five or whenever the last customer is gone, whichever comes first. So he will have closed up at five last night, gone home to bed, 
and then obviously he's been called by these guys. Either he didn't know they were coming this morning or he forgot or something has gone on. I don't know the background. So he obviously, when they showed up a half an hour ago to deliver, he wasn't there, so they phoned him. He's got out of bed, jumped on his bike, and here he is. So it looks like there's nothing to do with the Korean hot dog place. This is a kitchen equipment for the orange bar. A place I have never been into. It's advertised as heavy metal and heavy drinks. Not really my place. And he has thumbed his nose at the new no smoking regulations. And he's put his sign on the door, we smoke in here. So it's not really Dave's kind of place. I'm not a much of a heavy metal fan. I don't smoke or like being around smoking. And the idea of sitting in a bar like that, deafened by recordings of Led Zeppelin or, or, or whatever, Aerosmith or whatever it is that they play, while being choked to death by smoke. This is the last place in Tokyo that I would voluntarily spend any time in. It's okay, each to his own. It's just simply it's not my thing, that's all. But also, funnily enough, he and I, I've never met him, I don't know his name, and when you walk down the street, <clears throat> like there's people around here who I know well, we talk to, so when you walk down the street, hi, hello, how you doing? You exchange your greetings. There's people on the street that are the next level down. I know they're a shop owner, the guy that runs a coffee shop. I've never actually spoken to him, but when we pass on the street, I know he's the coffee shop owner, he knows he's the print block owner, and we, we just nod as we go by each other. So there's the speaking level of aisatsu, greetings, someone you have to speak to, someone you don't have to speak to, but you don't ignore. If I ignored the coffee shop guy, he'd think like, well, what's he on about today? So you've got to do this little nod. This is the same as any culture. Then there's the next level down, the guy with the coffee shop. He and I, somewhere back at the beginning, I've been here eight years, he's been here many, many more years. Somewhere back at the beginning, there was some kind of decision made not to move to that level of nodding to each other. Maybe it came from me because I, I was already learning, oh, he's the guy for that bar, the smoke and the noise. So maybe I was cool and didn't offer any gesture of, of the nod. Or maybe he's the same. I don't know. It probably came from me, I guess. But there's these levels of interaction with the people on the street. And I can't change it now. If I met him this morning going down the street and suddenly I moved him up a level and nodded, how you doing or something, you know, wordlessly, he'd be like, what have I done? What's going on? <laughs> once, you, once people get into the holes, once you're pigeonholed or pegged in something, that's it. It's all over. Pink Floyd, no, they don't do Floyd. No, 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 they do, uh, I don't know. The only one, I, do, I don't recognize them. They, are, they specialize in more Japanese outre uh, death metal. It's, it's death metal, which is what, did I say heavy metal? It's heavy metal trending to death metal. So I, I don't even know the names and stuff, I'm sorry. The only thing I would recognize, he once put a poster up saying special Aerosmith night tonight or something. I don't think Aerosmith is, I don't know, whatever. You know more about this than I do. So we're fine. He's got his normal business. Just simply his world is his world. My world is my world, you know, whatever. So uh, and he's got his fans. Just I don't get it, like who would want, you can't talk to your friends in the bar because the music is so loud. For Dave's definition of a pleasant bar that I would spend time in is somewhere that's really kind of quiet, you know. But, 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 and I guess there's lots of those places. There's bars for every taste in Tokyo, every taste. I remember one bar, <laughs> we didn't get into it. My parents were here visiting, it was exhibition time. My parents were visiting and it was because, and we had to stay in the Imperial Hotel downtown. My exhibition was, my exhibition was going on in Shinjuku, but that night I, I was forced to stay in the Imperial Hotel downtown. 
by virtue of the, I was due the next morning for my audience in the palace. You know, there, there's a there's a backstory that most people probably don't even know about. I had to visit the imperial palace the next morning, and because whenever you're invited to the palace, they have really really strict rules and stuff, and they're worried that you won't show up. So if you have a palace invitation, you must stay the night before in the Imperial Hotel. So that if the subway goes down, there's a strike, there's an atomic explosion, you can still walk across the street to get to the palace so that you won't miss your appointment. And this is encoded in the whole deal. When you accept the invitation, this is all part of it. So my parents were over here to see this and to see me. They didn't get to go inside with me, but they were here to see this. So we're in the Imperial Hotel, we're, we're there in the evening now, we've been here, got the stuff, I've got all my suit ready, measured for tomorrow morning, and we want, we go down into the lobby, whatever, to try and find a bar to sit and relax, the evening, my parents and me, this is 1990, 1999. <laughs> we're a little bit late, whatever, there's only one bar left, we move towards the bar, we get towards it, the Japanese sign there, my parents can't read anything. I look at my dad and mom and say, we have a problem here tonight. And dad says, what's wrong? Just, I need a drink. I just got to get one whiskey before I sleep, whatever. I said, well, we better get it delivered to the room. It won't be happening here. He says, let's just go inside. What's wrong? Let's go inside. Let's go inside. So I say, okay, you're not going to like this, but whatever. We get closer to the door, and it's a cigar bar. <laughs> it's a cigar bar. And that's it. As soon as I say, look, you see what's going on, right? He says, okay, let's get, it. Let's get room service. <laughs> so we get back to our room. <laughs> There's bars for whatever. There's probably a death metal cigar bar somewhere here. I don't know, whatever. This is Tokyo. This is Tokyo. There's probably an ukiyo-e bar somewhere in Tokyo, I don't know. Thinking back to Ayano-san and how she didn't mention anything about the job list she gave me, I think now, you know, thinking about it, I think I know why. Because, 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 she is coming to work this morning with her head absolutely full of her own work. Because she herself, there's a, she runs the subscription billing for us and it happens on a cycle. It happens three days a month the days that end with a one, the first and the 11th and the 21st. And those are the days which is, is, is the, the level where she sends out subscription invoicing for a couple hundred people each time. And then the things flood in, people send emails and back and forth and back and forth. So her, these are really uh, vivid, busy days. And she didn't do it yesterday because of course it's Sunday. Sunday was the 11th. Now, it's no big deal, it doesn't matter. People will get their subscription invoice one day later than they normally would. Most people probably don't even notice. They probably don't even know they're on this cycle, whatever like this. So she's been, her, she must have come into work this morning with her head ready full. It's subscription billing day and I'm a day late and what ramifications is this gonna have? I better get upstairs and better get to it. So she, that's probably it. She's not thinking about Dave's work and what she did on Friday to, to get me primed up. That's probably it, actually. Three minutes to show and tell. Okay, thank you, thank you, thank you. We're on, we're on it, we're on it. I could be saved by the, by the calendar. Maybe I need to keep that in mind. If I've got something that I need to, to avoid or evade with Ayano-san, make sure it happens on or around 
one of the days that ends with a one. <laughs> against the grain. Okay, that could have been bad. You see what happened there? That chunk came out and left a great big hole because the grain was the wrong way. I should have been a bit more careful. If this here had been a delicate thin line, we would almost certainly have lost it. But then again, if that had been a delicate thin line, I wouldn't have done what I just did. So, uh, so we're okay. Okay, there's the inside cut. What's our time? 9.40, we're done, we're done, we're done. Okay, you can see where it's gonna go. We are going to go around the outside of these things. These spikes are going to be left. So they're gonna be carved like this. We're gonna be cutting each one of these spikes. I'll just imitate it here. We're gonna cut out a V, and it will leave the spikes of the chestnut going all the way around, and then I'll clear the rest of it. This has got to be done tonight, so you're not gonna see these blocks again. Guarantee this is Monday. By the time I get back to this stream on Thursday, you're never going to see this block. It's going to be upstairs being printed. By the time we get back on Thursday, it's going to be our friend Surfing USA. Okay. Show and tell. Show and tell. Show and tell. We have a mix of stuff. There's three things today. One is of intellectual interest to me, and I'm just gonna show it to you because I want you to see what we've got. It's of no visual interest to you whatsoever. The second two objects, the print and the block, are going to be of interest as classical show and tell. This is the book from the auction that I posted the other day. It's not a book about printmaking at all. Maybe were you discussing, maybe somebody put it in. The tide, we've bought a book, and the title of the book is Oh, again, I can't paste just a sec. The title of the book in Japanese is that, and the title of the book in, in English is this. Why do I want this? And it could turn out that this could be extremely useful and valuable for us. <clears throat> it may not be actually a big deal at all, but it could also be very, very useful. John's got it. I know this is the book from Taisho 6. <clears throat> and it's put out by the government, one of the government agricultural ministry, blah, 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 whatever. And it has information and statistics on the current state of various agricultural, my God, how we, it's just a book, what have you done? You be careful on how carefully he's packed the book here. Hot Pepper Beauty. This men's makeup, my God. We'll get to it, we'll get in there, we'll get in there. Long story short, we are trying as much as possible to gather as much information as we can on paper making and paper making technology in the old days. It's one of the things that in Japan is fairly well, look at this, what have they done? It is fairly well documented and has been all the way along. Well, I said they've made their own book cover for this, which is the front, here it is, here's the front. So anyway, what we have here is some, ooh, that looks like bookworm dust. 
Hmm, take this outside. We have here a government statistics report and information report from Taisho 6 on cultivation of different things that are necessary for the Japanese economy. And the first section is like the ones we just saw. It's, uh, as we saw, it was on a mome cotton, uh, asked flax and stuff like this. And we have section four, uh, section five, Section five is Kozo. This next one is Mitsumata, and then the one I uh, must be on the next page. Yes, it's Gampi. And this is really interesting. You think about the Japanese economy. This is Taisho Six. What are we talking about? Taisho Six. This is 19, 1910, something like this, 1905. Agriculture in Japan. And what are we talking about? Number one, cotton. Number two, uh, flax, asa. Number three, it'll be hemp, I guess. I don't know. Did you answer this earlier on? And number five is kozo for paper making. This is such a big, 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 big deal to the Japanese economy at that time. So I, I don't have any idea what's inside here. This is, let's go to the page. Page 65. Uh, I doubt I'm going to be able to read much or any of this at all. But we are going to start to glean this, start to dig through, start to get this translated. There's a list of towns and places, obviously places where paper making is going on. We have data, data, data. We have tables, statistics. What I'm hoping is that we have things like temperature and the planting instructions. I don't know if we've got that sort of stuff here. A lot of weights, kilograms, how each year, how much I see. So it's going to be uh, information by region, how much uh, COSO is coming from each region, stuff like this. Anyway, this is nothing for us to sit here and dig through right now. Just simply to mention that as part of our overall research, we are trying to get as much information as we can about the how, why, who, when, and where of planting mulberry fiber. Because it's really, really looking like somewhere down the line, we are going to have to do this ourselves. The planting of the fiber is collapsing. The paper making, we are down to our last paper maker. I don't want to tell all the story again. It's now critical for our survival that we learn how, why, where of making paper. Okay, enough of that talk. Let's look at a print and a wood block. The print we have here today I told you we're getting bigger, 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 right? We've seen all the little stuff already. Bigger, 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 bigger. This is an Adachi reproduction of a Kiyomasa design. And the original, the Adachi work would have been done in 1970s, 1971, 1975, somewhere around there. And what we have here is an early, early, this is from the early days of Ukiyo-e before they had figured out how to do color printing. The process you just saw me doing, really super simple. Cut a notch in the corner, carve blocks that fit the outlines. They hadn't figured that out in the early 1700s. It came around 1730, 1740, 1750. It, the, we are told that it was map makers who wanted to put the blue lines in the rivers that figured out how to use that corner system to put the blue lines on their maps. Anyway, so at the time this was being made, the part of it that's woodblock printmaking is the black lines. A block was carved for the black lines only. They printed it and then out it went to a bunch of uh, little old ladies all sitting in a row. It was homework. They sent it to their houses. They did it at home painting in the colors. And the paint here, this would be what they call tan, which is, I think it's an old mercury compound. I don't really know much about the, the derivation and stuff like this. There were three or four colors that were used but tan, the red, was the big one. So that's why this kind of picture is called a tan-e. Tan-e, a red picture, literally. And they were 99, 99% done on kabuki. And this is the Soga brothers. If you're interested in kabuki at all, or if you know anything about it, there's, there's a, a massive uh, kabuki story that has been a tiny bit based on some historical episode and then woven and dramatized until it's got nothing left to do with reality at all. It was a vendetta story. You know, the, you've heard the 47 Ronin, the group of samurai, their master was insulted, forced to commit suicide, so they waited years and took their revenge. This was something similar. The two Soga brothers, their, was it their father, I guess? 
was killed in a duel or something, and they waited and took their revenge 18 or so years later. It's a similar kind of story. And along the way to the chance where they took their revenge, they encountered huge numbers of interesting episodes. This is one of the two brothers, and he is he's about to uh, board a boat to take him to, I don't remember this story. He's, a, he's on a beach. It's a famous kabuki show. He's on a beach, there's the water lapping, there's the waves on the wind, there's a boat there. He's about to board the boat to, to go to Edo or to go the other way to Osaka, I can't remember. And the bad guy comes along and they have this huge fight and the bad guy ends up being tossed in the air. And this is early ukiyo-e. The lines, the lines, the lines. Every line is waving, wiggly energy. This thing is one of the most vivid, living, alive drawings, depictions you will ever see anywhere. And this is the roots of ukiyo-e. When they talk about the singing line, this is the kind of stuff. Every line absolutely dances, dances, dances. Okay, this is an Adachi copy. There is apparently, according to the researchers, only one of these prints left. The British Museum has a copy. They've had it for years and years and years, over 100 years. They originally didn't know what it was. Researchers finally figured out what it was. It's the only known woodblock print of this particular scene left. The rest of them must have been tossed, hung up on the wall, stuck on the bill where they just disappeared. One copy is all that's known. But also, what also exists the woodblock from which that single copy in the British Museum was made also exists. I don't have it. Don't get, we're not going there. That would be socks ever gone. It's in the Tokyo National Museum. So I hear. Nobody can ever see it because they, they bury the stuff. But Adachi's people got a chance to get in there and see it. And they must have had a deal with the Tokyo National Museum to take a, an impression from it or to photograph it or something. And they used that for making their reproduction of the print. You will see on Adachi's prints always their name is on the back in katakana. It says Adachi. And quite frequently they have a message that also says, do not reproduce. Anyway, so be it. This is the thing. Also, I should mention it. Kusa, Kusa Zuribiki is the name of the Kabuki episode. Remember that? There's going to be a, a test at the end of the class. Kusa Zuribiki. Moving along, I've had this print. This is actually, this is from our flea market. We have many copies of this. They come up all the time. This is from the flea market. I think, I think, I think it's on our, on our web, shop, web shop. Moving, moving, moving along. Adachi made their version in the 1970s. And another company in Tokyo decided they would also like to publish it. This was Takamizawa. And this would have been now this would have been a bit later than that, nine, er, late 1970s or early 1980s. And I don't know the back story. They went to the Tokyo Museum and got permission to do this, or they looked a little bit at Adachi's copy and maybe reproduced that. I don't know how they got started. But Takamizawa also made a reproduction of this print. This size. They shrunk it, and shrunk it, and shrunk it, and shrunk it. And we have, I have, don't ask me how and where I got this, because it's actually a little bit uh, information that I shouldn't be talking about. But I have one of the Takamizawa blocks for this print. This is one of the blocks that was stolen from the Takamizawa workshop the week that they collapsed. They collapsed, when was this? This was early 2000s, kind of late 1990s, early 2000s. The Takamizawa company collapsed with huge debts. I had been getting phone calls. I had received a phone call from one of the paper makers saying, Dave, what about Takamisan? What do you know about them? What's going on? And I'm like, I don't know anything about what you're talking about. She says, they haven't paid for the paper for months. And I'm like, well, I don't really know anything about that. I'm sorry. Just 
Anyway, there was a day that week when uh, the company finally collapsed, and my friend Asaka Motoharu, the carver, was, was there. He was involved with this. And uh, a group of people with no pinkies came in and uh, scavenged everything they could grab. So people who had been owed money by Takamizawa contacted the gangsters, and the gangsters went in and emptied the place. And there we are. And this is a, oh, look at this. It's not going to do it. Okay, just a minute. I can't do both dark and light. Okay, 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 okay. okay. Camera, just a minute. Just a minute. Just a minute. If I put it on auto, here we are. There's the light. And that massive, large print that you just saw has been scaled down, and it's done so well. I am in awe of this. Okay, anybody can carve here. We've got this. You, I do this all the time. Anybody can carve crisscross lines. We've got lines here with smaller lines that go crisscross on them. That's no big deal. But look at this. We have major lines here, and the crisscrossing lines are feathered. So what you're seeing here is, look, where's the scale? Where's my finger here for scale? Look, there's my finger for scale. Look at the feathering on this stuff. This is insane. This is absolutely insane. And as much as possible, they have also tried to catch that thing I was mentioning before, the energy, energy, energy in every one of these lines. Now, it's kind of easy to do. Here's our vegetable man, but it's so noisy. When you've got big black thick lines at scale, you know, the, the thing we saw here. It's easy to make that energy. You just, just you know, the, the movement is there, the vividness is there. But at this size, at this scale, it's insanely difficult to do. And this is Takamizawa's boys. They did it. We don't know who carved this one. And this is a single piece of cherry, no plywood. It's very, very, very nice, beautifully hard cherry wood. wood that I would die for. And we are sort of thinking we can maybe make use of this. This wood is a little bit thick, and we are thinking that what I could maybe do is get a bandsaw and slice this in three pieces. Take the top off. Don't destroy the top. Take the top off, laminate it to plywood for preservation, and then I would have two pieces of thin cherry wood from the post-war period that we could then use to carve another print on, because this is rock hard stuff, absolutely rock hard stuff. Whatever, I'm not gonna do it right now, but the idea is there, as we finally run out of wood and we're scavenging wood we can find from all over the place. We'll see, we'll see, we'll see. Anyway, there it is, Kusa, I can't remember the name, but I got it written down here somewhere. Kusa Zuribiki. Kusa Zuribiki. Famous kabuki episode in small size and in large size. Part of our Mokohankan collection. This is the kind of stuff that is going to be on display when we finally get the exhibition space built in the back of our shop here. Coming soon to an Asakusa shop near you. Right. <laughs> okay. All right. Thank you very much. I am now going to be out of here. Say goodbye to the vegetable man. I'll be back here three days from now. The block you're seeing here, it's going to be history. That will be upstairs being printed. You will never see those blocks again. What you will see is you'll see me carving a bit more on the key block for the surfer girl. And then we'll move ahead to carve the color blocks on that. That'll be my work for the next coming few weeks. Okay, thanks very much. Let's pop up the outside. Dave's going to go down the street, get a cup of coffee. and I, I, I'm almost see what I'm going to see there. The, it's the orange bar that's renovating. Then I'm going to go upstairs to Ayano-san. I'm going to say, hey, Ayano-san, how you doing? <laughs> Thanks for watching, gang. Thanks for watching. <laughs> okay. See you in a few more days. Thank you again. Bye for now.